Hello, this video is about HyperPrompt, uh, our new software that uh, is what I would call a more efficient, more scalable way to do AI model interactions. Um, it's also a good prompt and engineering tool and there's a lot of features in here that are not in ChatGPT and I'm gonna show, uh, try to kind of power through them now. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below um, and I'll give a link in the description on how to join this. So one thing that is kind of surprising is not mi that's missing from ChatGPT is the ability to search. I mean, I have so many, um, so many conversations. You know, if I know I did something like a month ago that uh, I, I liked, it's going to be really hard for me to find that. What this does is it makes it very hard to use this kind of at scale. So if you use ChatGPT a lot, uh, then this is what uh, a hyper prompt is looking to address. Uh, also, I kind of see it as a prompt engineering tool, and that'll make a little more sense as I get into a little bit of the features and some of the uh, uh, upcoming features that are coming really soon. Um, but let's let's just jump right in. Uh, probably the most important thing that uh, I, if for being able to use this in an organized fashion is I think an organized hierarchical folder structure, sort of like what you would have with files. I think the search is also really important, maybe slightly below that. Uh, but having like an organized structure of, you know, these are subfolders and sub subfolders. Uh, now I know that the, like the interface could be a little, a little cleaner here, but at the same time, you know, you could, I could have, a, I don't have any conversations in here, but I could add a conversation into here and then also into here and have sub sub categories. And this makes it easier to organize your notes and your ideas and, and your, your AI model interactions. Cause you know, you might have one that has to do with this business, another that has to do with your friends, another that has to do with your family, another that has to do with brainstorming certain things. And I think it's really useful to, to be able to compartmentalize that and to work into specific areas at specific times. This is, uh, I think, uh, probably the most important and most uh, valuable uh, feature for making this a scalable, uh, usable prompt engineering tool uh, to where you can efficiently use it. So let's actually go into one of these conversations. Here, I'll show you by doing let's see, monkey. And I've got like a, a good monkeys conversation. I think it's uh, here maybe. Yeah, so this, this will point out several features. First of all, you'll notice that you can actually do images and text within the same uh, conversation. Uh, we're going to be adding different models. Right now there's just Dolly and GPT 3.5, but there's also audio. If you think about any form of text to audio, text to video, uh, audio to text, any sort of form of thing, we can put it in here and mix it all together into one conversation, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it's not really the same thing as being multimodal. Uh, and even with uh, GPT-4, which is supposed to be, uh, within ChatGPT, it's supposed to be multimodal, but it hasn't come out yet. It's really just, it can read images. This is also generating images. So this is gonna go all the different ways um, in terms of what you want to, you can mix different models, you can mix different text models, stuff like that. Uh, one of my favorite features, and actually, uh, I noticed this before ChatGPT did come out with a share feature. Ours, I think, is, uh, is a bit better. Uh, because it allows a variety of different types of sharing. So you can share with email. So this is like private sharing where they just have read access. This is actually edit access. This is actually inviting someone into the conversation so you can have the conversation with the AI models together. Um, and then it gives them a, a variety of different options, but then you can also do, here's a public one. So you can uh, do read or edit access. These are separate links and you can also uh, stop the access to, to the public link. So this is where you could, what you could actually do here is I could invite my friend Matt to join in on a conversation and then I could give a public link to where people can watch that conversation, um, which I think is pretty cool and not, not anything else I've seen out there. And, and an additional factor here that I think this really helps for if you're working with other people on prompts or brainstorming, there's actually, a, you can add comments so I can do, you know, Hello, uh, or this image is dope. Uh, which allows us to see this right here. And what, what will happen is the AI model, when if I'm doing like a text-to-text a -text, uh, type of th response here, um, what it will do is it will read the last 2,000 words uh, up above 
and add that into the context window, but it will ignore any of the comments. So this kind of keeps it separate, but also allows uh, you to build your prompts over time and to, to, to take notes on them and to be like, oh, and this, this response was good of a long chain. Even if you're down on the lower part of a conversation chain, you can make comments and edit uh, or, or, or tweak or, or make notes on specific messages within the conversation. We also have a little space over here that's just uh, a, like a temporary clipboard space. This is where, it, this doesn't really do a whole lot other than it just sits there um, as you move around. If there's certain things you wanna copy, if you have a part of a prompt that you like, you wanna put it over here and then you go to another conversation, you like a part of that prompt, you can kind of build a, a set of prompts within the clipboard. Um, and eventually I think we'll have a button here that creates a new conversation from the clipboard. So this note is specific to this conversation. So think about this almost like a, a master comment that no matter how long this conversation gets, you can see these notes about this conversation. I think this is pretty useful. It goes beyond, you know, renaming this, the, the actual name of the conversation. It gives you, it's sort of like a, like, almost like a subtitle, but a little bit deeper in terms of like, a, a, it tells you a lot, you can talk about high level stuff with regards to the conversation, which I think is pretty useful. Um, another important piece here is archive. So this is actually an archive button. So let's go here. So you can see that this is shown. Um, it, it always makes sense to have like a, you don't want to delete something, but you kind of want to remove it from in front of your face uh, because maybe you want to refer to it later. You want to be able to search for it later, but you really don't see yourself needing it anytime soon, if ever again, but you don't really want to delete it. So I think there's a middle, uh, there's a uh, kind of a middle situation where you archive things which basically puts it out of your vision. So now that I've unchecked that, you can see that it, it's actually gone, but I can still, I, I found this conversation via the search. I think that is pretty useful. So let's just really jump real quick over to ChatGPT. There's no search. They just added the share feature uh, on, on these. You can't do, I don't see why they don't have like at least Dolly Im images in here. You can't mix those into the same conversation. Um, there's no folder structure. I think that's a, a big thing. The sharing is kind of limited to one specific category. There's no high level notes. There's no comments. You can't invite other people into your conversation. If, if you send it to them, they kind of take that conversation. It's like their own fork of the conversation. So there's a lot of advantages, I think, to hyper prompts that allows for a more efficient scalable AI model interactions. And then I want to talk real briefly about the, the upcoming features that are coming very, very soon. Uh, if you haven't seen this already, I highly recommend it. It's called a uh, tree of thoughts. Go look up. It's a pretty short paper, uh, but I think this kind of it explains uh, a, at a high level what's going on with tree of thoughts. Essentially, if you're using chat GPT, you're giving the AI model an input and it's just doing, giving you the first, the, it's only output. It's giving you one output out. Um, and the problem with this is that there's some variability, some randomness in it. And sometimes the, the output kind of goes off on a tangent that it really should go on. It's, uh, and what, what they discovered in this, uh, and I've heard of other uh, people, one guy who's at OpenAI, I think one of the lead guys say, yeah, it turns out that the model is actually much better at evaluating um, responses than it is at generating responses. And so there's a variety of different uh, ways to go about improving upon this. I believe um, Bard, I think it used something like chain of thought. So Bard right now in their second version with Palm 2, the, the, the Palm 2 model is way, way, way smaller than GP, even GPT-3, much less GPT-4, but it provides pretty uh, better results than their version one. I think GPT-4 and ChatGPT is still better, uh, but the, they bridge some of that gap and it's by uh, doing this, kind of calling the model multiple times and asking it to evaluate itself. I don't remember exactly how this is different, but in this case, uh, let's focus on the tree of thoughts. And they provided some data and I'll show you that in a second in terms of like, wow, it dramatically improved the responses. And in some cases, something that GPT-4 didn't do well, this actually did much better. And essentially what, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna, the, you're gonna give your input and uh, uh, um, the, the system or whatever is going to ask for three different options. Give me three responses. And then the system is gonna evaluate those responses and you can kind of loop that multiple times. You can take the you know the best of the three, and then you can do that multiple times. You can just do it once, and the quality, it, it, the, and then just give back the highest rated response. And the quality of the output will actually be substantially higher. Let's just give some of the numbers on this. So just in out uh, with a I don't remember which model they used here, but it doesn't really matter. With an in out 
uh, they got 73% on uh, a test. And then when they did a uh, tree of thought, and I think they looped it five times, this was like a chain of thought for 100 loops, 9%, but this went all the way up to 74%. So 10X response, 10X uh, success rate. I mean, going from basically almost always unsuccessful to three out of four times being successful uh, with a train of thought uh, type of response. And this provides massive, massive improvements on, on uh, the, the final outputs of the responses. So what does this mean for hyperprompts? We we're in the works of building a feature where there's gonna be a checkbox that will allow you to implement a, a tree of thoughts. Essentially, you can get it to uh, evaluate, uh, generate multiple responses and evaluate those responses and give you the best of the, of the, of the responses. And then there will be options to loop it. So you can loop it you know, five times so that actually it evaluates quite a few different responses and gives you the best one of those. Uh, and this will dramatically improve the outputs that you get from the text-to-text -text models. Okay, there's two more features that are uh, coming that are, I think are gonna really make it a lot easier to do a lot with this software. Variable templates, you click on, uh, there'll be kind of like an instructions button, but really there'll be no extra UI buttons needed and you'll essentially put in something like this where you'll do i want to be an expert on expertise my goal is to goal please output output desire and so essentially when you put this in and you hit feed robot uh, a pop-ups will come up asking you to input this so what you can do and with with this model it's something that's kind of strange you can't do with um chat gpt is we can actually um we can actually feed the robot with no model and so what this will do is it'll create a page that you can duplicate and so uh what you can do is you can use this in multiple conversations we can take this conversation and we can uh we can uh, actually it's right here we can duplicate it and so that way we can use this formula multiple mul multiple times and you don't actually have to fill this out you just would hit go and it would fill it in for you i think that's pretty useful for creating templates that you can refer back to later uh, and then I really am excited about, actually about variations. This is very similar to, um, uh, it's almost exactly identical to what uh, Midjourney does with permutations. This is a really good idea. So let's just do this. So we have a prompt, a chicken monkey donkey riding a dinosaur roller coaster horse. Okay, so what this is actually gonna do, this is gonna provide nine different, nine different images from that, from that template. And so essentially with this, we're gonna be able to get multiple variations of responses from um, from one input. I find this to be very useful. Uh, this will be very useful because sometimes like you're you're building a prompt and you're like, well, do I want him to be a marketing expert or do I want him to be an advertising expert? Do I want him, do I want to tell it to do this or this? Sometimes you're not sure. And it's kind of a pain to have to like, okay, copy and paste, do another conversation, blah, 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 blah. It's much easier, I think, to be able to do something like this, where I want you to be an expert on marketing, advertising, my goal is to reach as many people. This is not a great prompt, but there's kind of two, two, and two. So it's eight different response, eight different variations, two times two times two. And I want you to be, and so what it'll do is it'll start with this, the first one. I want, I want you to be an expert in marketing. My goal is to reach as many targets as possible. Please output marketing brainstorming. And then the next one, it'll go to this next one and repeat these others right here up until eight times. And what's cool about this is that uh, you can combine this with the tree of thought logic. So you could actually check the, you could actually put this in, into the prompt, check the box for tree of thought. And what you'll actually get is you'll get quite a few, it'll, it, you'll loop the, if you, even if you do the loops, but even if it doesn't do the loops, you'll still get instead of eight kind of LLM calls. You'll really get like comparison of 24 with it narrowed down to the best eight of those 24. So hopefully you can see that with this, you could actually generate a lot of different responses from the large language model with much less input than, and, and much less like copy paste. Uh, let's see, so you, you could see what it did here in the, in the background, it, it'll tell you. So it asked me, do you want nine prompts? That's exactly, uh, it looks like maybe one of the prompts didn't work, but donkey riding a horse, chicken riding a roller coaster, monkey riding a dinosaur, et cetera, et cetera. So th th this is actually really useful in mid-journey if I wanna, you know, if I have a bunch of different ideas on how to do things and I wanna kinda see all of them all at once. You saw how much faster that was than me putting in these nine different prompts one at a time. So if you're still with me, thank you very much. Uh, go ahead and go to the link below and, and try it out. 
And um, I hope to see you on the inside. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Bye.